Uh, let's do the snapback first, the black snapback. Oh, I gotta tighten it. Aiden, wow. with, Aiden with the beanie. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful stuff. Ooh, look at this. And then, and then. Get in here, Ben. Yeah, yeah, Ben, slide over. Right there, turn around. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a good hat. You heard it here first. Get the merch. Tipsy Tailgate Media. <laughs> Let's get into welcome back to the Tipsy Tailgate. Peep the hats, gentlemen. Beanie, hat, hat, Dick's hat. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff here. Um, if you go outside of Dickerman's Ale House in Hamlin, Connecticut, you will see our flag. It's because we are the proud sponsor, I think, <laughs> of uh, Dickerman's Ale House. We, uh, we've got our flag hanging out up front, and uh, we're actually doing a live show there on Sunday. So come through. Uh, it's in Hamden, Connecticut. I mean, I don't expect you people, if you're living in New York or something. To come no, through, I expect you there. Ben, ben expects you there, so be yeah, there. Yeah, we don't care where you're from. If you're a tipsy fan, you will Fly be there. Fly in. Uh, you don't even have to be a fan. And then you can yeah, if you want to get drunk. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, Show up. Beer's on me. Just turned 21 recently, so beer's on me. Uh, I'll take the first round. But uh, at First round after that bet you hit. Oh, whew. Let's, let's, talk into, let's talk about that. So, we've got... <laughs> Thursday night football recap: Eagles win twenty nine to seventeen against the Houston Texans. They advance to eight and zero on the year. Um, I'll touch on my bet in a second, but first of all, you know Eagles look unreal. If you remember from the preseason, and maybe even before the preseason, the off season, I was very high on the Eagles. Um, I said that Jalen Hurts. I could see Jalen Hurts being an MVP candidate. He most certainly is. Maybe second right now in the entire rankings for that. Um, I also touched on how I think this team is going to be um, a Super Bowl contender, and nobody really believed it at that time. I said Nick Sirianni's a good coach. I said that this defense is going to be dangerous. It's been exactly that. Um, I'm looking like I'm completely right on on my take with the Eagles, but um, which one, which one of these teams is elite, Aiden? Which one? Texans, Steelers, Cowboys without Dak. Cardinals without D Hop, Jaguars, Commanders, Vikings, Lions. Who's none the lead? Them, but none of them. But the same can be said with the Cowboys and with the the Giants, which everyone is in a frenzy about. But we're about. we're not saying that they're going to go to the Super Bowl. I think people are. I think people think that the the Cowboys are in that circle or in that bubble. Who the besides best. Cowboys fans actually believes that? I, yeah, I agree. The, best, the Cowboys are in they've that. They got the best defense in the league. Cowboys are in that bubble. Bu bubble, bubble every year. Well, the, and the because show. of the coverage they get, not because of how good they are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree, but like, what what teams taking them down in the NFC for cert for a certain? Niners, hundred percent. It would the be Niners. a good game. I don't think they. they I think the Niners would actually them. smash them. No, you're crazy. smash them. You're crazy. There's no. Way. They would win by at least ten. Jimmy G played his first good game of the year last year and it, last week. It takes quarterbacks a long time to get used to the system again when they're sitting on their ass for six months. I don't know. I don't know. I know. It's, I know that. I cannot I that, wait for when the Eagles get killed in the playoffs. I I, I personally cannot I can wait. I see them losing to the Niners if that is the matchup, but I do not think they get killed. I don't think there's. I don't think there's any scenario where the Eagles get killed in a playoff game. I, I'm looking at it right here. They beat the Jaguars by one score. Jaguars kind of suck. They beat the Cardinals by one score when the Cardinals were struggling. Who the 49ers, they barely who the 49ers lose to. The 49ers have they, had they lost an injured by, they roster lost throughout four, the year. They lost by 14 points. If, if, you, if you want to ignore the Niners being hurt largely for majority of the season, that then you're welcome to. Inju but but if you want to take injuries into account, which they have every single year, which is why they go 10-7 and seven and then make a deep run in the playoffs, you can look at the context if you want to. But what about them getting smashed by the, by the Chiefs? Chiefs are a great team. If the Chiefs played the Eagles, the Chiefs would win by 17. So besides... Besides... So you're talking about impressive wins. Besides beating the Rams twice, who everyone knows that the Niners own the Rams, what's an impressive Well, isn't that impressive that they own the Rams? Isn't it impressive I, that they I, own they Aaron just, Donald they just, they and the Cooper Cup and Jalen Ramsey and Sean McVay? Isn't that impressive? Well, they, they've, they own I'd say the that's Rams pretty impressive. 
I'd say eight and zero is impressive, and not losing to the Falcons by fourteen. Listen, eight impressive. eight and zero is impressive, but we fall into this trap every year. We fell into this trap with the Carolina Panthers in twenty fifteen. The Broncos, the Panthers, the Let's Ride Broncos. The Panthers didn't beat for the first half of the season. They didn't beat great teams, and they were eight and zero. Eight and zero. But this is that's a completely different team. Than, than the Eagles. I would argue that that Panthers team was better than this Eagles no, team. No, the shot, defense was no. far better. Far better. That, that defense. Far better. That that defense was. I would argue that the coaching with Ron Rivera was far better. That defense. I would argue was, that Cam Newton hit a higher ceiling at quarterback than Jalen Hurts has. I don't think. I don't think this. Is <laughs> the one thing, the one thing that this Eagles team has over that Panthers team is that they actually have offensive weapons with guys like AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard. Um, Devontae Smith, obviously Miles Sanders. Well, they have I, better weapons. Well, I'd say I say Jalen Hurts is is much better of a pass of a passer than than Cam Newton that season. I think so far this year he's he's two. I got it. I got it. I got it. I just looked it's, at it. It's the right. So you have to go. No, I know. I just yeah, it's right here, right. I don't know. All, all I'm saying is all I'm saying is this team could go um, fourteen and three, fifteen and two, and they're not going to the Super Bowl. They will not be in the Super Bowl. Well, who know? I mean, this this is the thing with them. They've got the best run attack. They've got the best run attack in the entire in the entire league, and it's not just solely reliant on on their quarterback. Um, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts is able to to have games where he's having twenty three yards, like he did last night, and Miles Sanders is getting ninety three. Kenneth Gainwell is playing good. They've got Boston Scott for the red zone sometimes. This is a this is a team. I that mean. I mean, this th- their receivers are legit. AJ Brown yes. is a legit one. Devonta Smith is a legit deep I, threat and playmaker. I don't see a great team on this schedule, though. Even well, for the rest of the year, I don't see a good it, team. I understand, but is it? But it's, it's not their fault, though. No, that's not their the fault. The Cowboys and the Giants also. I'm not have, saying it's their fault. A cakewalk. I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm just yeah. saying they're not as good as their record showing. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Which isn't I'm their not, fault. I'm not. If I were to say like my my Super Bowl favorites, I wouldn't put the Eagles probably – I'd probably put them in like – I'd probably put them at like four or something. I was just going to say, I'd put, five. I'd put them I think, at four or five. Yeah, yeah, I would exactly. put them at four or five. I think the 8-0 and o is, exa- is, oh, is a stretch. Like, them being 8-0 and o does not – like, the, when the Patriots were 8-0 and o in 07 compared to this 8-0 uh, team. Completely different. All right, so – Completely different. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list the rest of the games for the Eagles. You tell me when you think – No, I, I just looked at it. The only time they will lose is the yeah. Titans. So it's – it stays easy. It's the Commanders. Win. Colts. Win. Packers. That honestly could be a loss. Who knows if Rodgers will, like, go T- off. Titans. Win. Uh, loss. They will lose the Titans. Interesting. Giants. They will split with the Giants. Bears. Win. Cowboys. Loss. Saints. Win. Giants again. They'll win one of the two against the Giants. So how many losses? So what, they have two there? or three losses there? Yeah, I mean... Well, oh. the, the whole division, the Cowboys to the Giants. That's why everyone was going crazy about the Giants. Like, you're going to go crazy about the Giants and then you're going to shit on the Eagles? Like, they're they're literally together. They have – all three of them have the easiest – three easiest schedules in the entire league. Um, but I wanted to talk about the bet that I hit. You ready? No, I'm not ready. <laughs> Miles Sanders, anytime touchdown score, over 74 and a half yards, Miles Sanders – under 54 and a half yards, Jalen Hurts. Davis Mills, one interception thrown, and the Eagles to have two sacks. Odds? Odds were plus 600 with a boost, plus 780. $50 to win 440. <sighs> Cash me out. Um, that was my bet. I would say that's right? pretty decent. There you, well, there you well, go. Not too bad. I, there you go. I crafted it in front of you and and another one of our roommates. And I was <laughs> I was like walking everyone through it as I was saying it. I was like, it was impressive. It was impressive. I, I like I had conviction. I mean, you don't throw far. <laughs> you, don't throw, you don't throw fifty on a on a parlay <laughs> unless you have you know. Conviction. I have conviction. I have, I have conviction. conviction. That was a conviction pick. Um, but let's let's get into some trade deadline. You know, it was really really hot oh, this yeah. year. Um, let's let's go two teams. Uh, we'll give the rating for each one. Uh, do you want to take? So. Yeah, so for mine, I'm going to consider it deadline, even though it was a week before. But obviously, I know we yeah. touched upon it last week. 49ers getting Christian McCaffrey. As I've said all year, this team is going to the Super Bowl, 100%. Um, it looks like they're hitting their stride, obviously, with McCaffrey throwing a touchdown, rushing a touchdown, and receiving a touchdown. Um, I think we're going to see the old C-Mac again on the Niners. I think that him with Jimmy G and Debo and, and Kittle, 
uh, in Ayuk and under Shanahan and with that great old line that they have in San Fran. I think it's just a perfect situation um, for him to hit his peak as a player. And I'm really happy that he went to a team like the Niners um, where he's not being wasted, uh, especially a guy who has had injury issues in the past. Uh, there, there's a bit of risk that McCaffrey will have a shorter type of career, Definitely. and that would really suck if he never got to play on an elite team. Uh, so perfect for those, for him, yeah. and another part of this that I don't think has gotten enough attention is that it was the Niners and the Rams that were in contention for uh, Christian McCaffrey. So, I mean, stealing him away from probably your biggest rival, that's just another reason that this trade was so good and uh, so impressive on part of Kyle Shanahan. Uh, so I'm going to give this an A++. Because I think this has Super Bowl implications. Great stuff. I mean, I think, I think that this move not only makes them even more of a legitimate guy, but like I remember Colin Coward was talking about it. Um, this past Niners team before they got CMC, say it's in the Super Bowl, you're on offense, your quarterback isn't all of that pl- much of a playmaker, right? And he needs the guys that are make the plays. Do you trust Debo Samuel or, or Kittle to make that insane play? I trust Kittle. I I'd say I'd say it's like it's about a fifty fifty there, but like no doubt, like you put the ball in CMC's hand, you know he's willing his way to that end zone to the first down, whatever it is. He's I mean, gonna make a big play. Honestly, big I don't. Game. I don't know how much I agree with you saying that CMX a better playmaker than George Kittle. I've seen well, George Kittle, Kittle make some ridiculous plays. Kittle's made, yeah, I mean, Kittle's made, makes... I, I think plays, Kittle's the heart and soul of the Niners team. I, I think he's a he is the leader of, their, of the team. He's a huge part of their offense. I mean, every time he's out, you could tell that it's flat for the most part. Um, but I'm saying CMC just from the, the fact that... It's definitely the most reliable. To, yeah, you don't need Jimmy G to put a good ball on him yeah. to, to make a play. You could just pitch it to yes. him and he could make a play out of the backfield. Um for my first trade deadline, or did you give a rating on that one? A plus a plus. plus. Okay. Um, for my first, I'm going with the Eagles trade for Robert Quinn uh, from the Bears. I this was a really good move in my opinion. This gave me, I told Ben this. This gave me flashes of, um, like I don't know what the right saying of it is, but like a half a halfway version, like a Walmart type version of the Rams trading for Von Miller, because. You add to an already stacked team and already stacked defense. You add a pass rusher who has big, big game, um, a big game history. Um, I mean, everyone forgets he's older, of course. I believe he's thirty-four, maybe. Uh, he's coming off of a year where he had eighteen and a half sacks. Mm-hmm. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's he, insane. Yeah, like he's coming off a year where in the like the years before that, eight and a half, six and a half, eleven and a half, two. Then he goes to eighteen and a half. I mean, it just shows you that he's not he's not finished. Um, they only give up a fourth round pick for him. He might not even play much in the regular season, but in the playoffs, he's gonna go and he's gonna make a big play. He's gonna be like, like in a way, as what I just mentioned with the CMC, where you can say, oh, CMC, I could see him making a big play. Robert Quinn, I could 100% see him making a big play for the Eagles down the stretch. Um, so I'm giving that one, uh, I'm giving that one an A, just because it's not quite Von Miller. Mm-hmm. But um, but definitely as close to a Von Miller type move they could have made this year. So well, listen, I, even though it's not Von Miller, it has similar value to similar it, right? Value, Where yeah. for, for a fourth, also. I yeah. think, I think one thing people forget in sports, and it's all sports. Big names are big names, right? Like they're superstars, they're X factors to make big plays. You can find lesser names that put up similar production. Like the Rams didn't need Von Miller specifically to win the Super Bowl last year. They needed someone who gave a similar type of production. A guy, yeah. they, they could have won the Super Bowl with a guy getting one less sack than Von Miller all season. But, I mean, the fact that they got Von Miller just fortified it, fortified uh, them winning the Super Bowl. So, um, I, I agree with that take quite a bit. Another one that I have to give credit to um, <clears throat> is the Minnesota Vikings trading for TJ Hawkinson. Mm-hmm. I think this makes them a legitimate elite offense. Uh, the one thing is, obviously, there's there's uh, question marks about Kirk Cousins and his production in the playoffs. Um, but T.J. Hawkinson, you got Thielen. I know Thielen's dealing with some injuries. Uh, but you got Jefferson as well and Dalvin Cook. So, th- listen, this offense is loaded. Kirk everything he needs. Uh, and who knows, man? I mean, I don't see the Vikings beating the Niners. I don't really... I wouldn't. If you put a gun to my head, I wouldn't say they would beat the Eagles. I don't see that happening. 
Uh, but I think that they might be the third best team in the NFC right now. So uh, I- I'll go with uh, I'll go with a B plus for this one. Yeah, I mean I like Hawkinson a lot. He's one of those guys that um, that's not only reliable for his quarterback, but he just seems like he's one of those he's one of those guys that like not only big play, but he's consistent. Like yeah, like he'll be a good consistent piece of that offense. Where like Justin Jefferson usually consistent, um, Thielen, you know, and you don't know if he's going to be back fully when mm-hmm. he's, when he gets hurt, and and then you got Dalvin Cook. I mean, Alexander Madison. They've got a lot of pieces, but I feel like Hawkinson's one of those guys that will always be consistent for them. And he's also he's putting up solid not, numbers, not like elite numbers, but solid the, numbers on, on the, the Lions. Lions. Yeah, and they and suck. And he's young. I was about to say. So I he think he might like, not even peaked yet. He, he's had no. Like, he has not peaked at all yet. It was he sad. It was sad all. to see from the Lions. Like even I don't know why after week one and like just coming off like hard knocks and stuff, I really thought the Lions were gonna be like good because they 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 showed up. Like, yeah, I thought good. they'd be a lot better than they were. And like on paper, they're not like terrible. No, I think they've no, they're really not. They've been playing some tough teams too. Like I know. Well, Amon Ra's like hurt always right yeah, now. I think hurt. when I don't know. Hopefully, when Jameson Swift, Jameson Swift, Williams like comes back, well, I mean, I've, I have I've had Jameson Williams on my IR since week one. Like he's just been collecting dust. I mean, like I, I would now. I would say that the Lions could figure it out, like and figure out how to win like three more games. But they just traded their like second best player. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think I don't they know. can. They should keep golf and then just like draft a quarterback and like this and just develop him behind yeah. golf, except the losing for think, a little bit. I think they should get Caleb Williams. I think I think he's the guy that would fit good there. A good a good thrower. He kind of reminds you a little bit of Matt Stafford, where he could just sling the ball. You know, turn. I honestly, I I whatever. think they should just sell the team. <laughs> just a defranchise. They're I was just... talking to I was talking to Ben too. He doesn't even like Dan Campbell that much, really. I think he's like a nice guy, but he's a horrible coach. Clearly, like. He's not that good at his job. <laughs> kind of sucks. Like, um, interesting guy, but he's talking about biting kneecaps. Like, that's <laughs> fucked up. Uh, <laughs> that's so not I, right. <laughs> I, I got my second one over here. And um, for value purposes, it's not going to be as high of a grade. But um, I'm going the Dolphins trading for Bradley Chubb. I love this trade. I love this trade. They, uh, they got Bradley Chubb in a fifth-round pick in 2025 for Chase Edmonds. Uh, a first round pick in 2023, which was the Niners' first round pick, um, which is important. And then the 20- so that'll be like pick 32 pick. in the draft. Their picks are so confusing, especially the one that yeah, got like they've got a bunch of from yeah, them. That one's, yeah, exactly. So, um, so I'm going, I'm going B, B plus for this one because I think this is another similar move where these teams are starting to realize like. If we're gonna go for it, let's let's go for let's it. Let's go for it. And, let's do it. And they look good. They're yeah, the, winning. The with Bengals Tua. like kind of helped that out. I think last year, like yeah, just like we're, you get hot at the right time. Well, I mean, I think the high, I think the Rams kind of set the precedent the Rams, yeah. for trading your way to a championship yeah. in the NFL. Uh huh. Um, you know, Odell, Von you, Miller. You had Matt Stafford, Von Miller, and OBJ all trades, and those were what three of your six core pieces to winning a championship uh-huh. last year. I think that's the. I, I could be completely wrong, but. I feel like that's probably the first time in NFL history that your three main pieces were added nine months within a nine month span of the Super Bowl, and then you win the Super Bowl. Like that's insane. Yeah, maybe the Bucks just because Brady, who they add? They added Brady and Gronk. Brady Gronk. Yeah, I guess there's no third there. I'm happy we don't get to talk about Brady this week. He blows. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So I after that. That Bradley Chubb trade, I snuck in there to DraftKings and I hit the Dolphins plus thirty five hundred on the Super Bowl, uh, fifteen to win five forty. Yeah, nice. I just think that. it's a nice, good. Nice. I just think it's a good value. Just throw that out even the window. They, even if they go to the, even if they go to the playoffs, I just hedge it. You know, um, I don't. I don't necessarily think they're gonna win it. I don't think they're gonna get to the Super Bowl because of how tough the AFC is. But. Um, you never know. You never know. Tua, whenever Tua's in there, they're winning games, it seems like. So. It's pretty wild how much they win with that guy yeah. starting. It's pretty fucking absurd. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I think um, he's good. He's just so good. He's just, he's just good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so, I want to I wanna formally apologize to everyone. I, I said Tua I don't, sucked. Tua is, Tua is just good. I don't put him any higher than, like, 13. It's like he's great. He's good. No, he's good. He does his job. Just He's on the most loaded offense in the league. One of them, mm-hmm. one of the three best offenses in the league. So, yeah, I mean, who do you who do you think would would do better? Who do you think would produce more? What two is doing right now with the fit with the Finns or Mac Jones as the quarterback of the Dolphins? 
D- Tua. Uh, no, Mac Jones got ruined what? by coaching and development. It's true. I, that's why I, it's 100% that's why I true because I figured I figured Ben would go. No, Mac Jones got ruined by coaching and development. If you don't see that, you're a fucking idiot and you know nothing about football. Like absolutely nothing about football. The oh. guy was ranked the 85th best player in the league by the players, so you know it's not biased. And then you take away his OC, you replace him with Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. If you can't see how asinine that is as a fan, I can't stand this too about like people who watch football. Before the season they're like, "Oh man, like the Pats are going to struggle on offense this year. They they just replaced McDaniels with Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Like, Matt Jones is going to struggle. And then he struggles, and then everyone's like, oh, my God, he's really struggling. Like, no shit. You said he was going to fucking struggle. Why are you acting surprised? People are just so stupid. I don't get it. Like, why do we act dumb as a society? We see something coming. It happens. And then we're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe this happened. You fucking saw this coming, you... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Bleep. Um, <laughs> all right, so I think um, I think we should we should slide into the division winners updated, where we were right, where we were wrong. I've got my... I've got my um, predictions up. Do you have mine, or was that uh, pre-tipsy? I, was, I wasn't I a part I of the... Uh, um, Damn. So I have mine are... I had the Bills winning that division. Looks good. I had the Dolphins, too. That also looks good. I had the Patriots at eight and nine, and then the Jets at six and eleven. I think Still both of those possible. hit. I think both Still of those very hit. Possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't know what happened. The Jets just need one more. Imagine if they go one and nine. <laughs> it, it's so doable. It's just so doable. <laughs> <laughs> I've got um. <laughs> Zach Wilson is the worst quarterback I've ever seen in my life. I was so right about that guy. I don't want to hear it anymore about Zach Wilson. Now those interceptions. He should be out of the league at the end of the year. He should be out of the league. He is so bad. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. What does he do well? Aiden, what does he do well? Uh, he gets with MILFs. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um, so, all right. So then um, I had the Ravens. And the Bengals in that order. It's that way right now. Um, had the Colts. So wrong about the Colts. They suck. Um, I think everyone was wrong about the Colts. Yeah. Uh, then I had the Chargers, Broncos, Chiefs, but very close record-wise. Still very possible. Um, on the NFC side, I had um, – very wrong here <laughs> – the Rams, I had them winning again. I, dude, I mean, they literally they lost Andrew Whitworth and they added Allen Robinson and uh, and what's his name and uh, like they didn't really lose any pieces besides that one offensive line piece and they just they suck they just suck right now. Um, they are not good at all. They're they're three and four right now. I had them at thirteen and four. Um, we gotta win out. We gotta win out, Rams. Win out, win out. Um, <coughs> they are horrible. Rams got to win out. Jets I just to, need one I more. Okay, where second. right now, where are you putting Geno Smith in the MVP race? I mean, I got him at like five. He's probably he's probably somewhere around it's like, like most the top impro- seven. Most improved, I wouldn't say MVP. Most improved for sure. I think like we Saquon right there for most improved. We look come back, come back. We Sorry, look at the word value Gino. wrong in sports. It's not who's playing the best. No, yeah, his value is huge, but like a team that was we predicted them to go two and fifteen, and we weren't. Yeah, no, if Geno, I, I'm not if even Gino gonna lie. Smith I bet wins MVP this year. I'm not saying he will. I'm not watching another. I'm game not even gonna lie. I I life. bet before the season. I bet the Seahawks have the worst record in the entire league. They I were supposed so to be good. awful. I just I don't know how they're good. I, I still don't know how they're good. Like they're playing no, great. It, like, but that's where we get the term value. Yeah, I mean, he's, a team that was. Generally expected to blow, like be so bad. Midway through the season, they're leading so their division. Where do you put Jalen Hurts on the on that on that MVP? Second. Right, well, okay. Um, Josh Allen's easily won. If Josh Allen doesn't win MVP this year, <clears throat> excuse me, that is criminal. Criminal. If Josh Allen doesn't win MVP, that would be so fucked up on so many levels. Another team I was wrong about the Saints. Oh, I was so wrong about the Saints. They're just like we had they them. Blow. I think Michael we all. Thomas, said, I think-
Time out. Michael Thomas is. Yeah, I'm like, never. Oh, fuck, what's wrong with your ankle? I'm never. Like, Brian Robinson got shot in the fucking leg, and he's <laughs> yeah. playing like three weeks after, and your fucking pussy ass ankle is causing you Oof. like six Oof. weeks, twelve weeks, Oof. two seasons, bro. Put the fucking ice pack on. Get out there. That's ridiculous. Am I not Oof. right about that? It's ridiculous. <laughs> your terminology was wrong, but he got shot. He got shot, and he came back. Your, your terminology was, was can't play on a turf toe. Terminology was frowned upon. He's playing on a turf toe. But man. your premise was correct. Thank you. <laughs> um, dude, and then who's, who's editing the Eagles this episode? The we need some bleeps. And then I did have the Eagles winning the division. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, oh God. God. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, this well, is well, getting well, out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you on your division? division? Um, so I was right with the Bills. Um, I stamped that for me. I got it. I think, right. I think I'm looking right about the Ravens winning the North. Yep. I, I think yeah, that right. might happen. Uh, Ravens, so, the North. So Actually, wrong about the South. Roquan, Ra- uh, Roquan Smith. So, yeah, Roquan. Uh, so wrong about the AFC South. Everyone, I had the Colts. Everyone. I think a lot of people did too, but I said that the Titans would be 9-8 and eight and just missed the playoffs. Yeah, it's looking right, like yeah. they're going to get in. Um, and then I had the Chiefs winning the West, so I was right about that one. Um, and then... I also had the Rams winning the NFC West. I think the Niners will win now unless, you know, Geno Smith is, in fact, MVP, and then they will win that division. Uh, NFC East, I was wrong. I had the Cowboys. Honestly, I'm not giving it up. They could still win, oh, but yeah, I'm not going to bet on them to do it. Um, and then the NFC South, I had the Bucks. I assume they'll figure it out. Like, if they don't, that's embarrassing. Uh, and then, am I missing one? Packers? Oh, uh, the Vikings. Yeah. We were both very high on the Vikings. Yes, but that I think thing as we, we said last week, I I don't yeah. I don't think it's as much the Vikings as it is the Packers being awful. Yeah, yeah. and the Bears and the Lions. Yeah, they are not. Uh, what are they? Seven and one right now, Vikings. Six and one. Six seven and one. Like six that. and one. They're six and one. They are not a six and one team. Well, I mean, it, you add a guy like T.J. Hawkinson, that kind of well, makes I mean, you a seven and one team, like a legitimate this team gets seven and one. Bounce round one though, right? Unless unless this all unless this I think team starts. Pushing, like, They're dependent on the matchup that they get in the first round. I could easily see them winning because it's a wild card game, right? And the teams that you play in the – the reason I think that the Eagles well, will no, lose the Viking, their – the Vikings wouldn't be a wild card. Yeah, they would because oh, yeah, only yeah, the yeah, one yeah. seed gets yeah, the yeah, bye. Yeah. And bad. that's part of the reason that I think that the Eagles will lose their first playoff game because you're playing a team that plays through the bye week, and we've seen that be an advantage for a lot of teams, especially in the past few years. And they're, they're, they have this momentum to them right now, and you lose that when you get that bye week. Like it, many teams have said it. Peyton's Colts did this a lot. They lost all the mo- the momentum that they had from the season in the bye week, and I think something similar could happen to the Eagles. Uh, but I think that could be something that works in the Vikings' favor: is playing through that bye week, playing against a lesser opponent. I'd imagine uh, with them being six and one right now, and if you're like if you're a thirteen and four wild card team, I assume you're the one seed, right? Like I can't see you being much lower than that, especially if you win your division. So. I think the Vikings could win a playoff game. I'm not going to rule it out, uh, but Kirk Cousins is a choke artist. Oh yeah. Um, I want to do. Let's do um, this week in NFL history. Um, ben, this, this is all you. Let's hear it. Yeah. So week nine of the 2007 season, the Colts and Patriots. It was uh, deemed to be the undefeated bowl as the Colts entered seven and zero and the Pats entered eight and zero. As we all know, in 2007, this is the year that Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and the Patriots went 18-1, uh, and one, uh, losing the Super Bowl in their last game. Uh, but they didn't lose to, uh, to Mannings every time that year, as they beat Eli once and Peyton once, but lost to Eli in the Super Bowl. Two Hall of Famers, might I add, Eli and Peyton. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, the reason that this game just stands out to me is the history that stands behind it. Obviously, the Peyton and Tom rivalry, the Colts-Patriots rivalry, uh, the Belichick-Dungy rivalry that was involved in that. Even Kraft and Irsay have a bit of beef between them. Uh, but this is the first time that they played after the 2006 AFC Championship game where uh, Peyton came back from being down 21-3. to uh, So, you know, obviously a lot of history. And then some of the names that played in this game, obviously you have Tom, you got Peyton, uh, you get you got the Patriots defense with Rodney Harrison and Vince Wilfork and Junior Seau, uh, and then on Peyton's side you just got you got guys like Joseph Adai, Reggie Wayne, Dallas yeah. Clark. Yep. Uh, the game ended up being twenty four to twenty. 
Uh, Peyton was up 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter, and Tom drove them all the way back to win the game. So, just a little moment in uh, in history in the NFL Week Nine. Thank you, Benny. Beautiful stuff. Thank man. you, Benny. Beautiful stuff. Um, I want to talk on the World Series to wrap this one up. So, uh, if you didn't see last night, Chaz McCormick made an unreal catch to to save the game. Yeah. For the Strohs. Uh, they take another one back-to-back games in Philly, and now the series is three to two. Houston leads, um, and they're heading back to Houston tomorrow, eight o'clock. And it looks like the matchup's going to be Zach Wheeler versus Framber Valdez. And listen, Wheeler's been unreal, but I mean, Valdez is insane. Also, like this is going to be, this is going to be, like, a legit match. Like the, this the might Phil's- be one of the best games of. The entire season. The Phils are going to push it to seven, but they're going to lose game that. seven. So on game game seven would be um, – who would go for them game seven? Would that be – I don't know who would go for them. Suarez? Honestly. Dude, it might have to be a pitching by committee type night, which is scary. I don't know. That would make for an interesting game seven. I'm trying to think who pitched um, – Nola just went, right? When did Nola go? I yeah. think it would be Suarez. Nola wasn't last night, was he? Nola was what two nights ago? <clears throat> Nola could go game seven. No, 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 no. Nola, Nola went two nights ago. It would be, maybe. So Nola would go game seven, if they push it to game seven. He would have to. Three starts in a World Series. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah, I mean, unless they did. Listen. Unless they went with. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm guessing. Yeah. If if Wheeler and Nola are going Game Six and Seven, the Phillies have a shot. Yeah, of course. Well, that's the thing. Our my main thing was how much of a shot do you give the Phillies losing two at home, going back to Houston, which is a huge advantage. Like, let me be like playing home is a huge advantage, and the Astros winning two in a row was so big for them that saved their season. Um, I honestly, I could see the Astros winning in six or in seven. I don't see uh, a scenario where the Phillies win two in a row in Houston and win the World Series, but that's just me. Well, I mean, Philly lost two at home. Why can't the Astros lose a second at home I, and then it's tied up and anything happens well, in a game seven? I think the Astros are the better team as a whole. And I think if the if if it was 3-2 the other way heading back to Houston, I could see the— It would be over one. Philly. Yeah, it would be over. I could see them taking one. I, I don't know if I could see them taking two. Um, again, Ben's got an unbelievable Phillies in, what was it, in six. So yeah. now now it's got to be pushed to seven uh, for that to happen. But, you know, for the pod, I mean, we're still rooting for the I'm, Phillies. I'm not going to rule them out. If, if any team has proven that when they have their backs up against the wall, they fight back, they fight through, this season it's the Phillies. So given that, I mean, you obviously can't rule them out. Bryce Harper's an animal. He, listen, it's hard to get to the World Series, and Harper understands that, and Schwarber understands that, and I'm sure they've told Bohm. I'm sure they've uh, relayed that message to a lot of their other guys on the team. So, I mean, it would really suck if the Phillies lost this because th- this has yeah. been a scrappy yeah, group city, of guys. Yeah, I mean, at some point. I think the city of Philadelphia has got to take an L. Eagles right, you know, Phillies. Oh, let, the let the Series. Eagles take an L. Let the Phillies win. <laughs> let the Phillies win. Um, all right, final prediction. <clears throat> what happens in these next two games or in one? What do you think? Phillies in seven. So, yeah, riding with it. Um, I think go, Wheeler throws an absolute gem tomorrow night. I'm going to go Astros in seven. I, I think they they take one from – and and they make a classic of a game. Listen, game this seven. is it's gonna be a scrappy. Game if this seven. goes seven, this is a classic World Series. Oh yeah, um, I've had so much fun watching this yeah. series. This whole postseason, this has been the best baseball postseason I've seen in a long time. Yeah, this has been very exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, unless you have anything else to touch on, that's it. Go Phils, pull it out, please. Go Phils, fighting Phils. Um, keep scrapping Philly. Beautiful stuff, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Follow us at Tipsy Tailgate Media on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Twitter, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everything. Any platform, we're there. Get the merch. Look how tough this is. Look at this hat. Where's the camera? Look at that. Wait, bring it over here, son. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. It's 
forwards, backwards, whatever you need. Look at Aiden. Put the hat on. Put the hat on, Aiden. Aiden, put the hat on. The beanie too, dude. Come on. Come on. That's unreal. Look at this patch. (laughs) Time out. (laughs) Keep it rolling. We're rolling still? Keep it rolling. Oof. Oof. Wait, want me to model the hat? There we go. There we go. Yeah, Ben. Aiden, let me model the hat. Ben, put the hat on. Right in front. Am I going up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come right up. Let's do both. Let's let's do the uh, let's do the snapback first. The black snapback. Aiden with Aiden with the beanie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful stuff. Look at this. And then and then. Get in here, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Ben, slide over. Right there. Turn around. Nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a good hat. You heard it here first. Get the merch. Tipsy Tailgate Media. Signing off.